And we are uh, back, Alan. Hey. Are you excited to get right in, right back into the uh, into the thick of things in the Feylands with Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning? Yes, the, my favorite part of the show is this this run have been the Kingdoms we've of done, Amalur Reckoning. So, every episode segments. we've played a little bit, we've gotten a little bit farther, we've experienced a little a smaller part of this incredible game, this what incredibly massive game. But yeah. unfortunately, we're going to have to cut it short tonight, Alan, because we have a big surprise for the EGI audience. What is, why why what are we oh, doing it's a, it's a it's a it's a brand i don't new, like it's, it's a brand it's not a new segment it's a it's a it's a segment that we've done before we have a guest which is a, the actual ceo of night dive studios uh what? steven kick is here uh so if you guys are a uh, big fan of, of, of night dive studios here on egi i'm i'm a little bit starstruck so if i'm acting like i i can't hold my I don't like together them. it's I don't simply know. because i i just i'm so excited we, i'm such a big fan of everything you guys are doing uh over there in uh, vancouver washington uh, <laughs> the games that you guys are, are are remastering and putting out are, are just absolutely great you 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 brought back one of the, the great games of my childhood turok 2 uh in a way that i never thought possible i'm playing Robbie, it you playing gotta turok tell me 2 why in widescreen on a handheld i don't know why we did that but I just wanted to say I'm such a big fan of Alan being such a big fan of you, Robbie. Oh, thank you. It's a wonderful sentiment. Alan's such a big true. fan of the show. Alan is, is, is very, very much a part of the show. Uh, very, we wouldn't be able to do the show without, without him. So, but we have I this just, interview. We got it. We, have, we can't talk about Alan all night. We got to talk about, uh, about Stephen kick and night dive studios. Or we could talk about Robbie. No, we got to So Stephen kick, uh, why don't you talk about just Robbie. let's, let's break the ice a little bit. Night dive studios. Where does that yeah. name come from? Night dive came from my personal love of night diving. It just exactly. seemed to kind of fit the philosophy of what we do, which is kind of comb the depths for treasure that has been long lost. Mm -hmm. uh, classics, if you will. And uh, when you're doing a night dive, it's very dark. Uh, it can be frightening, but there can be a, a high reward factor there if you know what to look for. That is, what an incredible, what an incredible uh, it's sentiment! What a, what a, what a uh, eloquent way of putting that. And I have to, uh, I have to admit, uh, when I, when I hear about somebody going down into the water, uh, plumbing <clears throat> the depths in the middle of the night, uh, I, I think, uh, what, what the hell are you thinking? I mean, there's, it's, da it's dangerous as hell. There's, they'll, they'll search a. a alligators and and snakes and uh there's just like weird bugs that get under your in your boots and in your shoes you can't be going into the water that late at night it is pretty frightening at first uh you do have a torch which is just a light source mm -hmm. and uh and there's a whole different sort of that's sort of an english word alan if you torch <laughs> what they call flashlights in england or in some some parts of canada or australia don't tell when, me. Don't yeah. Talk to me. Talk to them. When you're under the water, talk it's to a him. Porch. Uh, well, okay. Well, <sighs> uh, th I think that's uh, uh, really interesting, and unfortunately, we're going to have to start with the hard questions now, Steven. So, are you are you ready for this? I yeah. All right, because I'm, I'm not going to I'm going to throw lots of curveballs your way because I think it, what, even though I respect the, the hell out of you guys and whatever it is that <laughs> you're doing out there in uh, Vancouver, Washington, we got to ask you the big question of the evening, which is what the hell's going on with Call of Cthulhu Destiny's End? Where is that game? Can you get it? Can you make it? Can you put it out? We we know that there is a we know that what's it's sort of like what do you call it? It's not a gameplay video. It's a, a it's a, a kill zone Two, PlayStation three. Uh, E3, it, you know what I'm talking about, Stephen. It's it's it, not the game. It was a trailer. It, it, it's a trailer, but it, it's a target video. It's a target video for Call of Cthulhu Destiny Send. So we know that there's something out there. Those there models, those uh, character models, those weird lumpy creatures that we can only assume are the uh, weirdos from uh, Rats in the Walls. And uh, I, I gotta say, if you can, if you guys can pull this off, you can make history because you'll be remastering a game that never came out in the first place. That I it's want. quite a challenge. I mean, I think we're personally up for it. Um, last I heard, Dark Corners of the Earth was developed in a cottage somewhere on the English countryside, and it, you know, Destiny's End could still be there. We really Destiny, don't so know. So you got to go to. So you got to get out the water at night, and you got to get on one of those overnight flights to England. Yeah. Find this. 
find this dang cottage, that's where the source code is, what you're telling me. That's where the character models are, the environments. This it's was a probably mod- all this there. Is a, this is a reimagining of the Call of Cthulhu universe in the style of a uh, uh, wonderful Resident Evil 4, Alan. Mm-hmm. I don't understand. I'm pulling up right the, around uh, the same time. The website. Too. Alan's pulling up the website right now, so we're doing the deep dive. We're here. We're doing the night dive. So are we, we're the night divers. Dot com. I mean, I think we should all just kind of embrace it and just go for that dive. We've never released a game that's never been released before. Well, let's make I mean, that clear. But I think that you know that's probably the next step for us as a company all is right. to is to find these things that have never been made. And let me let me talk about your comp- competition for a second there, Stephen Kick, because there's some comp- there is some there are some people that are doing similar things to what you're doing. I want to talk especially about Pico Interactive, the wonderful ah. people at, down at Pico Interactive that re released that re released the Jaguar 64 uh, version of Impossible on a cartridge, which was very unexpected uh, format for that uh, game uh, for those of us. Alan, uh, Alan's of course the big Impossible export expert, so maybe he could. Uh, comment on that yeah uh, back to you alan so pico interactive is of course uh in chart now they have the licensing for odt escape or die trying which uh, of course big fans of the show we've uh we've covered in terms of uh showing actual king of kingdom kingdom showing the gameplay from escape or die trying here on the king we're reckoning so they got the they got the license first. They got there. They got to that finish line before you guys did. Was did it hurt? How bad did it hurt? Did it was it a burning sensation? Was it was was it painful to know that these uh, that these people who are basically just making fake versions of games that came out on the Turbo Graphics 16 were actually uh, in charge of this incredible IP, Escape or Die Trying? It's wow. something that keeps me up almost nightly. Um, sometimes if I manage to fall asleep, it's it's cold sweats. It's it's night terrors. It's just it's a burning sensation. You want to take you want to take you want to take the you want to take the blood back. You the the uh, blood, you want to take the blood out. That's right. And you know, uh, Pico, Eli, if you're listening, I'm coming for ODT. He's, he's, that, that's it. this is an EGI exclusive. Night Dive Studios is going to uh, is going to do a hostile corporate takeover of of Pico Interactive, and this is this is a this is a this is a moment. This is a turning point in the this particular part of the games industry that makes remasters of these wonderful old uh, 3D in- engine games uh, like ODT, like Turok 2, like uh, Power Slave. Metal fatigue. Power the gloves oh, really the, have the, the, the to start other. coming off because if we're not careful, I mean, Pico right. is going to get to Destiny's end before us, oh and that's God. just can't happen. You can't let that happen. Those those those, those Texas uh, Rangers down there in in, in Texas uh, can't get their hands on this incredible IP. That's this incredible game that could have that could have uh, changed the world of uh, Lovecraft based action adventure games may i Alan? offer a little bit of just uh, unsolicited absolutely let's hear it. let's hear it. This is exclusive unsolicited, unsolicited advice from Alan advice i'm just on the, on the site i'm looking through the catalog of games that you've released i i i don't understand why, why maybe you could release a game re-release a game like cyberpunk 2077 or half-life alex or um any of those newer games that people enjoy because a lot of these games I never heard of and they're they're like kind of Robbie quote unquote Robbie games. I mean, Doom Eternal, it just came out, but yes, you, yes, you know, I yeah, I think it's due point. for a re-release. I just it's Thank you. it's okay. ready. It's it's ready, it's ready to, to come yeah. out again. I think it's old news. Okay, I think make it that would again. that would be good because you have an older an old Doom, and I, I just think people would really enjoy a new Doom. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Okay. I don't know about that, Alan. I think that people, I think that people are looking for the old Doom. I, I right, think that Robbie. people are looking for games like, like Power Slave. And I, I would like to talk. Uh, this is where the gloves come off because this is the question I've been waiting you to ask do for Final a long Fantasy time. Seven, the Alan, new one. I, I, this is the this is the question I've been waiting to ask for a long time. For the this is a Night Dive Studios question. Right. It's a real guest. So this is the real this is the real gas. This is, this is the gas in the car. It's Power Slave. What you guys are doing a re-release, a remaster of Power Slave or Exhumed. And I want to know, is it the Saturn version of the PlayStation version? Because those are two different games. They have 
striking similarities, you might say, but those are two very different game engines. And the DOS version is different too. Well, so, the DOS the DOS version is just the PlayStation version. Let's be honest. DOS? It, no, no, it's completely different. The DOS oh. version is more or less a straightforward okay. shooter using the build engine. The PlayStation version is okay. You know what? They're very similar. We're, okay, thank we're you, on thank PlayStation. You for, thank, going? You, thank you for for validating me, Stephen Kick. This is why we brought you on the show. Robbie, they're because going on to PlayStation you're, Five. You're and he's talking about actually, DOS. You're making money off of this stuff. I don't get this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're making some money, um, just enough so that we can go out and keep, you know, scraping the barrel. <laughs> you gotta ask. We all. Got, we, in your opinion, this is this is no no uh, no. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to, to to come down too hard on megapixel. But what the hell's going on with that Panzer Dragoon remake, Stephen Kick of Night Dive Studios? You know, I'm not entirely sure what a Panzer Dragoon is. I mean, it's a dragon. can somebody explain to me what that is? It's it's two O's. So you know, it's like a, a an oon is like a spear. An oon is a spear. I think. So. I mean, Alan, you're this you're the spear expert. I mean, you tell us. A panzer dragoon is a just a weird way of saying dragon. It's a dragon with a spear nose. Sure. Have you ever had crab rangoon? I've had tra I, rangoon, uh, crab rangoon. <laughs> no. Uh, but I, what I have had is, is a is a t terrible time finding out what how the hell twenty five dollars turns into this buggy uh, low low uh, depths of field mess that is the Panzer Dragoon remake. I mean, you know, can I, those I people be trusted it? with the, with that IP? And can you, after you finish your hostile takeover of Pico, Inter they're a publicly traded company, Pico Interactive. Right, I would hope so because that's the only way we'll be able to take yeah, them over. Yeah, because hostily. you can't take over just a privately owned company, a family. So we got to what we got to do is we got to get them to, we got to get them to list on the stock market. So we're and, do and, the you know, we can go. What we have the yes, but if we list on the Hong Kong stock market, then no one else is going to notice. Why do you Why do you know all this stuff? So we got to go over there, Stephen Kick, to Hong Kong. You can't go anywhere these days. Well, you we can't oh, yeah. go except we can't go anywhere. This is the problem. This is the problem. With Pico Interactive. This is my entire issue with them because they've got this great, they've got a great IP in the ODT Escape or Die trying, and I can't even get to Hong Kong. They've also got Super Noah's Ark 3D. Yeah. Alan. Yes. So. Licensing. This is this is this is a big part of your business. Uh, yeah. This is a uh, how you should how license Spider-Man to make a, the new Spider-Man game. You should license. You should what you should license in terms of Spider-Man is uh, of course Spider-Man sixty-four or, or Web of Shadow, Shadows for the third two X. Uh, Maximum Carnage is what I would personally go. Maximum for. Carnage. Interesting yeah. choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many Red Cart. Would... Everything. Comic book. All included. Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. Atari Jaguar. Atari. Hmm. It hasn't been released on that system yet, so we could do something old. You could, do something. You could use the extra power, the extra power of the 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 CPU in the Atari Jaguar, because we all know the graphics card is just practically not even there. I mean, so what else should what, we license? What else should we? I mean, we could. What I I want to know is if. Your license, okay. So you license. How, you, what do you do to license things? Because I'm ta um, I'm taking notes. Well, I figure out what it is I want to license. Figure it out. And then I'll generally go to MobyGames.com. Moby Games. Moby Games. Which has great, great re repository of uh, screenshots and, and and chat rooms that Moby Games is. I EGI would not be the show that it is without Moby Games. Okay. It's really an incredible resource, uh, mostly because you can go and look up any game and there's usually a comprehensive list of credits of those people, oh. the developers who are involved in making the game. Um, I find out who they are and I basically stock them. What do you do? They you go to their house, you go to their house, you call them, you call them on the line and they and keep telling you not game. to come to your house, but you go to their house anyways. And then they hang out with you and, and you get to actually just spend just have a fun blast of a time hanging out it's happened before you hang out with these game developers these classic game developers they must they must impart to you some wisdom hey it was really tough porting this to the n64 i had to use the ram pack 
We didn't have Rumble support. Mm -hmm. No one was there for us. Uh, you must get some. It's it's sort of like visiting the old bards of. Uh, it's exactly I, like Greece. that. Greece. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I've never been served mead. I have a um, or any other beverages of that type from that era. I have a question. When you licensed the seventh guest in the 11th hour, how terrifying of an experience was that? Like, did you have to go speak to a, a ghoul or go into a, a, a mansion at night? The stock mansion? That's right. I've been there. And that's exactly what we had to do. Oh my and God. Um, unfortunately, my CD-ROM drive only goes up to 2X, so it was a bit of a... Jeez. It was a slower a experience, but uh, actually the people inside were very um, receptive to the idea of re-releasing the game on which the house was based. Oh my God. And uh, we were able to get another game from them called Tender Love and Care. Tender Love and Care. What kind mm -hmm. of a game is that? It's an interactive movie. Okay. Uh, I think it's got John Hurt in it. I want to I want to take a quick break from talking about these wonderful uh, point and click seventh guest eleventh hour games, and I want to ask you a, a quick question, which is how, if if someone were to hypothetically uh, reach out to uh, Todd McFarlane and Jim Valentino and ask if they could make a video game with the characters that they made spawn in Shadowhawk and take Ooh. those characters and put them into a kind of Lovecraftian setting version of New England in the 16th, 1600s. You know, could I, it's, could I, could they, could I, could that hypothetical be, uh, could I, could they, could I do that? I think you and I are on very similar wavelengths. Mm. Um, I have a copy of Shadow Man number one on my nightstand. I was reading it last night. Oh my God. He breaks their backs. That's the, that's the lead. Yeah. It's incredibly violent. So you can imagine so a wonderful character like Shadowhawk if he was let loose in this uh, in this 17th century uh, kind of uh, pre I mean it is a colonial America I almost said pre colonial but it's right in the middle of that period isn't it and you can imagine that Shadowhawk let loose on those uh, on the Puritan uh, setting could do a lot of damage break a lot of backs find witches and uh, demons and warlocks and of course uh, if there was what if it could possibly be that that Shadowhawk and his friend Spawn who's the Todd McFarlane character let's not forget mm -hmm. they could meet a little boy who lives oh on God. the rooftops and his yeah. name could be Philip and he could look at them and tell them what they're doing and that could be a huge aspect of the first chapter of what becomes an expansive uh, world building game where you start in a very small town I don't, and the town is called Gloomsbrook I love and this that idea. town just is uh, walled off and it's also surrounded by poisonous fog and you have to get out of the you have to get out of the fog but in, because you have to find a talisman the talisman is is someone knows where the talisman is this is such a good idea you find the, the talisman you have to go into a basement and fight a creature oh that God. has been held prisoner by one of the villagers that this that Philip is going Robbie, to wait, be... wait, wait, wait. Robbie, I think you should um, not talk about this in such detail. Just maybe ask broad questions about licensing and yeah. So, funding. What, how, ask some who, funding who, questions, but don't go into detail give, about give it. Give me Todd. Give me Todd McFarland's uh, cell phone number. I don't have that, uh, but uh, I do he, have. But you can get it. He's got a copy of Uncanny X Men two sixty six signed by Jim Lee. Can we help get you, that Robbie? up on the screen? I don't have that currently on me, no. Well, here's um, the, pro uh, the pro Let me let me let me back up. This kid on the roof named Phil. Can we Phil, have Phil. his name is Philip? He's Phillip. and he says and he always is on the rooftops. It's like can, can we have him turn into the Max? No, he's got to stay the kid. I mean, the Max can be in there. I mean, the Max should be. I want the. I, could be the Max. Could be Chapel. Uh, it could be uh, 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 the Silver Lady from Wildcats. Oh yeah. Um, mm. It could be uh, also you know talking about. Tur I mean, you guys, you're the Turok expert, but you could have these Valiant characters from Deathmate. I mean, I could call Archer them and up Armstrong, and Armstrong, the Eternal Warrior, all the Exo Man of War. All the Valiant heroes in and the 1990s version of the MCU just kind of in that puritanical 
Lovecraft. Exactly, setting. exactly, exactly. So we gotta go, we gotta get these people on the phone. We gotta get Jim Shooter on the phone. We gotta talk to them about licensing. Uh, you're you're a lawyer, so you can do that for me now. Robbie, ask ask after for money. Robbie, Alan, ask for money. What's it? What's that, Alan? If you a, a, you should ask him for money. Can I have a uh, hundred thousand dollars? Let's put a game design document together first, and then we'll talk about budget. Alan, he's going to hear the pitch. He's, That's so great, because Robbie has pages, step is, pages of dialogue yeah. and diagrams of how the inventory works. And so, yeah, there's, a, there's, uh, I'm not, I mean, I, we can't, we can't, I don't want to say that anything is real, is that, but if like you hmm. wanted to have a really interesting inventory system, which I know is what game developers like really, that's what p publishers do. You have a working title or a code inventory name? systems. Uh, it could be a wagon that they pull around wherever they go. Do you have a working title or a code name for this project? It's just a game that I made up. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, I got my parents. Okay. What happened was we didn't have video games in my household, but then my parents got divorced, and then and then I had a lot. What platforms would you uh, want to support? 32X. 30 <laughs> Robbie, don't sell yourself short. This could go on any on all of the pl major platforms. I want it on 32X. Sega CD 32X cuz you got a good combination of things you yeah, can Yeah, I want that I want Robbie, that no. I want that crisp I want that crisp Sega CD audio. I want people to be able to take the disc out of the Sega CD disc drive, put it in their CD player and enjoy that Damn. sweet music from uh, that we don't know what it is. Robbie maybe wants it to be on dialogue. Steam. Robbie dialogue wants this to be, to be on Steam and maybe on Switch and PlayStation. Let's get it. Let's, let's get it. Let's get a. Let's get a, let's get a collection. Major... I mean, we're, this is like a. This is like whether you call a. Uh, this is like a brainstorming meeting. This is what people in the industry are doing. So this is what Night Dive CEO Stephen Kick does when him and his team sit down. They're like, "What are we gonna do?" And we're just like, "Oh, we gotta get IM8 Pit. We gotta get limited run. We gotta get them to put out 32x cartridges of this game." Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's this is printed. We're practically printing money we're here live on adultswim.com is this live yes i think so i'll check so uh uh steven kick uh we're having such an incredible time i wonder if uh you would actually be willing to stick around for a little bit longer uh we're going to take a quick break but when we come back we're going to be doing the list and we would love for you to be a guest on the list robbie i can also just do the list alan Robbie. let's do the list just, we're going to do after the break. So you're okay with sticking around? Sure. All right. So Love we're going to take list. a quick break. We'll come back with the list uh, with C CEO, Night Dive Studio CEO, Stephen <clears throat> Kick, and uh, friend, best friend of the show because what? he's going to get this. He's, he's, he's got the ideas that we, he's got, you have the, I've got the ideas. You've got the connections. We're going to make it happen. Let's take a break. Did you say best friend? 